we hear musical repetition very clearly in hymns, uh, which use the same melody to set a series of poetic stanzas. The scola will sing the first two stanzas of the Gregorian hymn Ave Maristella from this page in the Metz collection. At the top of the page, you'll notice you'll notice text in red ink, which is called for that reason rubrics. These are not texts to be recited, but directions for performance. So this rubric tells us on what kind of feast day to sing this hymn, feasts in honor of Mary, the mother of Christ, and at what hour, vespers. Liturgical books often save space by abbreviating words and syllables. Why? Because a lot of it was memorized. Here, uh, omnibus, for instance, looks like oibus. The M and the N have been uh, abbreviated. There's a little mark uh, that, that shows that abbreviation. Such contractions can make deciphering the manuscript difficult. That's probably the hardest part of, about reading. Yes, the, the choir, the scola agrees with me. That's the hardest part about reading the notation. Also, the initial capitals are sometimes a little hard to see. This is the a of the word ave, and the bar, the crossbar of the A is somewhat obscured by the figures of the, uh, of the Madonna and the child. Notice, as the squire sings, notice the symmetry of these botanical shapes uh, growing out of the word of God. They're, they're going up and down. They're, they're very symmetrical, like the different verses of the hymn. And this, too, is a kind of visual music. There are several more verses, all with the same music. After the last verse, the choir sings. Amen. Now, this, these pages uh, that you will also find in the exhibit uh, transmit chants for the Mass ordinary, that is, the prayers recited chorally at almost every Mass. Early in the service, we sing the Kyrie eleison, which you find, where do you find it? Kyrie eleison, there's a glowing orb by the, by the uh, K of the Kyrie. And this is sung at the beginning of Mass. It's one of the few chants not in Latin but in Greek. It's a formal appeal for forgiveness, and it requires there then a threefold, very musical kind of repetition. Kyrie eleison means Lord have mercy. It's sung three times. Christe eleison, Christ have mercy, also sung three times. And then Kyrie eleison, three times again. Here there are rubrics in the music. What looks like uh, I, I, and J is the Roman numeral three for the three times you are to repeat that music. And there it is after in the Christe, and finally, on the next page, uh, there's uh, just a Roman numeral two, uh, because you sing that setting twice, and then you do, the la you do a more expansive setting of the same words the last time. Uh, this is a more ornate chant than we've heard so far. Notice how many notes there are that extend the, uh, the word kyrie, as you'll hear. We'll sing it antiphonally, that is, with two choirs answering, answering one another. Kyrie eleison. 
Sohn. At the end of Mass, the deacon dismisses the congregation. His text is Ite Misa Est, as you see with the glowing orb, Ite Misa Est, uh, from which the Eucharist gets its Latin name, Misa, and we get the English word Mass. The choir's answer is not noted here, and why should it be? Everybody knew from custom, habit, and memory that it was Deo Gratias, Thanks be to God. An important part of monastic life was praying for the dead. This page gives the beginning of the introit, the entrance chant for Mass in services for the repose of the departed soul. That Mass is known by the first word of the introit, which means repose or rest, requiem. In the large capital R here is depicted a grand funeral procession bearing the body of a nobleman into the church. As the choir sings the antiphon of this introit, consider how the slow, even pace of the chant suggests the solemn steps of the pallbearers. <laughs> 